become a nobody, become everything, become a designer, writer, marketer, socializer, runner, bodybuilder, philosopher, scientist, psychologist, and polymath who knows how to sustain their obsessive curiosity. The universe rewards those who don't impose their own limits. So recently I received a comment asking me to make a tutorial on Danko motion graphics. And I was curious, who is this Danko guy? And it took me to his YouTube channel and guess what, I was already subscribed to him. So I got more curious. And it seemed like I watched few of his videos. But if there were any interesting motion graphics, I would have certainly remembered him. But his videos were static and there were just few inspirational and thoughtful sentences in between. Other than that, there was no motion graphics instead of these videos. So what is this Danko motion graphics? I again asked YouTube. And after seeing few of these thumbnails, I really understood what this person was asking for. I guess these shots from videos with satisfying vectors were made mainly popular in Instagram. And to be frank, I've seen similar videos from so many creators trying to do the same thing. But I guess it all started with this guy himself, Mr. Danko. So today, let's make a Danko motion graphics video instead of Damage Zero Soul. I've taken this reel from his page and we are going to recreate this. The reel's length is a little over 70 seconds and I'm not going to use a video, we are just using the audio. So let's drag and drop our adjustment layer. And also I'm using a 1920 by 1080p resolution timeline with 24 fps. Yeah, I'm using a horizontal aspect ratio and not a vertical one. And this is only for the better presentation of the video. If you want to do this vertically, you can change the aspect ratio to 1080p by 1920. If all of that is sorted, then let's go inside of Fusion. So, if we look at the first few frames of the video, we can see that a glowing white solid circle will scale down and a normal hollow one will appear. So, step one would be to create these two circles. For that, let's add a merge node and connect it to a background like this. Now, this background node, as the name says, is going to be our video's background. As Janko uses the same colors, we are going to leave it as it is. The next step would be to create our circles. First of all, we are going to need a white solid one. And for that, we need an ellipse node, a background node, and two glow nodes. The ellipse is going to act as a mask for our background, which creates a circular shape. And the two glow nodes are going to add more depth to our scene. So let's add a merge node, connect them all like this, and add it to the string. Don't forget to change the background color to white. And just like that, our first element has been created. Now let's tweak these settings. For that, click on the ellipse node, add an expression to control both height and width at the same time. Go to frame number 0, add a keyframe over here and take the width all the way down to 0. Then go towards frame number 6 and change the width value to 0.124. At frame number 10, the width again goes down all the way to 0.046. And it continues like that till frame number 16. Which means that just add a keyframe point over here without changing the value. And if we preview our animation, we can see our solid circle scaling all the way up, then slightly shrinking down and maintaining that diameter. Now we need to add two more keyframes to complete the animation. So at frame number 22, change the width again to 0.083. And finally on frame 27, bring the value all the way down to 0. And this is going to be our preview. But we need to smoothen these curves to make our animation flow seamlessly into our scene. And for that, let's open our spline window. Select the first three points, hit S on the keyboard to smoothen it. And again do the same thing with the next three points as well. There is a small thing we have to do before we finalize this animation and that is to change these two glow nodes values. The first glow node will have a glow size of 18.2, then again this glow to 0.989 and blend to 0.106. Now the second glow node will have a glow size of 95.9, 0.739 on this glow and blend at default. Now we can go towards the blend node and add a keyframe on frame number 24. Then on frame 26 we are taking the blend value all the way down to 0. This is because, as per our animation, the white solid circle will vanish and that's exactly when our secondary circle will appear on our screen. In order to create this circle, the drills are the same, just add an ellipse node, glow node, merge node and connect it all like this. And add it to the stream, then create an expression on height and connect it to the width. But we have to hide this ellipse till our solid circle shrinks. And from our previous nodes, we know that the circle starts to shrink right over here. So add a keyframe on the blend value inside of merge node on frame number 21 and take it all the way down. And at frame number 25, we can bring it all the way back to 1. So here the solid circle shrinks and that's when the holo circle appears. The animation for the holo circle starts at frame number 42 and the width value we are going to give it is 0.06. Then on frame number 48, it increases to 0.095. Then again at frame 52, it is going all the way down to 0.028. But this is still a solid circle and not a hollow one. So for that, let's uncheck the solid option and change the border width to 0.003. At the 50 second frame, something big happens. 
According to the Danko video, this is the point in which the circle multiplies and forms a rectangular array of circles like this. And we don't need to make all these hundreds of circles all by ourselves. We can use a duplicate node to create an array like this. And we are not just going to use one duplicate node, we are going to use two of them. The first one will array 9 circles on the y-axis and the second one will array these 9 duplicated circles 11 more times in the x-axis. So let's quickly change the values of these duplicate nodes. In the first duplicate node, we can change the copies to 9. Then on frame 52, we are going to add a keyframe on center x and y. Then on frame 58, we are going to change this y value to 0.5615. This is to distance our circle from each other. And this is our result. Now on the second duplicate node, we can give the copies to 11. And on frame 52, let's add a keyframe on center x and y. Move the playhead to frame number 58 and let's increase the x value to 0.5388. And in our preview, we will have something like this. Now let's move them in the spline window for a better satisfying motion. Our animation is good, but it is going far away from the center. So in order to fix this, we are going to come back towards the ellipse node and add a keyframe on center x and y on frame number 52. Then go towards frame number 58 and send the x to 0.304 and send a y to 0.251. Let's smoothen all these curves inside of our spline window. If you feel like the hollow circle is a bit pixelated, then you can select on the ellipse and slightly increase the soft edge value. Also, don't forget to smoothen our curves every single time. And after doing that, if we move forward with our reference video, we can see that the circle not only multiplies to this array, it also come back down to the singular hollow circle. So for that, we'll have to bring all these values back to its original position. And in order to simplify all of this, let's go towards the 76 frame and over here we can add a keyframe on the ellipse center x and y along with both these duplicates nodes center x and y. Now move the playhead to the 80th frame. And the simple thing we can do is to change the center x and center y value to 0.5 on the ellipse node and both these duplicate nodes. If you ever feel like the hollow circular border is a bit too thick, then we can keyframe the border width and have this reduction happening on our animation. And after smoothening these curves, we can see a smooth satisfying preview like this. So far, we are making progress and right over here, one part of our animation is done. Now let's move on to the second part of our animation. And over here, we can see these 10 icons which are being scaled up from the hollow circle. And don't worry, you don't have to find all these PNGs, I will provide them all in the description along with the reel, the audio and any other extra files I'm using in this video. And one more thing, you don't have to animate all these 10 PNGs. You just have to do one and we can copy paste this node tree and replace the media one by one. So let's start. First of all, we are going to add a merge node and add a background to it. Let's decrease the background's alpha value all the way down to zero. Then let's add our first PNG image followed by a transform node, a glow node and one more transform node. Let's connect all of them with the help of a merge node and we will have a node stream like this. But even after adding the PNGs, we can't really see it on our screen, right? This is because both our background as well as our PNG file is having the same black color. So let's change the color of our PNG to a whiter tone. And for that, we need to add a merge node and a background node over here. Change the background color to white and inside the merge node, change the operator to in. In stands for inside and after doing that, our PNG is visible. Now let's go towards the transform node and add a keyframe on frame number 80. Then bring the size all the way down to 0 and on frame number 84, let's take it all the way up to 0.516. If we do that, we will have an animation like this. But it's not exactly like our Danko video because in our reference video, the transformation starts from the center of our hollow circle. So in order to create such an animation, we will have to change the pivot point to the center area. And for that, let's type in this value which is minus 0.5953 on pivot center y. Now, one small thing we have to do is to change the center y value to 1.597. And if we preview our animation, we will have something like this. The next step would be to rescale our PNG file. And for that, I'm using a secondary transformation node which we added in the beginning of this node stream. So click on it and decrease the size to 0.404. The reason why I added these two transformation nodes is that we have seen the pivot point of this transformation node which is drawing all these controls to the PNG image. As the pivot point of this origin is repositioned, any transformation properties we do to this will affect the animation style of our image. So we need a secondary transformation node so that this will only control the PNG from the center. And this is required because in the coming frames, right after the PNG scales up from the center, it shows the scale down animation which we have to create in a separate transformation node. So on frame 84, add a keyframe on size and on frame 88, decrease the size value to 0.31. And this animation is also ready. Now there is a circle animation happening behind the PNG and for that let's add a new merge node and place it over here. Then let's connect a background node along with an ellipse node. Now instead of the ellipse node, change the border width to 0.0025. Then uncheck the sold option, 
and add an expression on height and connect it to the width. Also change the background color to white. Go towards frame number 88 and change the width value to 0.082. Click on this keyframe point and after that take the playhead to the 93rd frame and increase the width value to 0.128. Also when our circular border scales up, it kind of fades away after a certain point. So in order to create this, select the merge node which is connecting the ellipse node, then go towards frame number 88, decrease the blend to 0, add a keyframe on blend, then on frame 93 it goes all the way up to 1. And finally on frame 96 it will go down to 0. We haven't tested the glow settings yet, so let's tweak this guy. First of all, glow size should be at 250 and then the normal glow will be at 0.909. Then open the spline window and select all these curves and let's smoothen it by hitting S. We have our first element ready and I will play the animation for you. Now our work gets 10 times easier. So what we have to do is to copy all these nodes which we just created. Then paste the merge node to the node tree like this and go towards the spline window. Over here, uncheck all the previous nodes. An easy trick to find all the nodes which we just copy pasted would be to rename these nodes with the animation to A1, A2, A3 and A4. Or you can name it any way you like so that it will be easier to find in this section. Now uncheck all these nodes except for these ones and move our playhead to the 95th frame. Because this is where the second PNG which is a wider PNG appears. Now select all these curves and change the very first point of these curves to the 95th frame. And if you play our animation we can see this thing happening. But we can see that the angle is a bit off, but we are getting there. The simple fix to this would be to select the merge node and change the angle value to minus 36. Why 36? It's because we are forming a circular shape with the 10 PNGs and each PNGs would be in an angle of 36 degree from each other. Oh bro, if my math teacher sees this video, she's really gonna have an heart attack. Alright, moving on. In order to replace the PNG icon, we have to delete the media file, then drag and drop the second PNG which is the writer PNG and connect it to the transformation node. So whenever you are copy pasting all these nodes, just stay in the media files respectively like this. The next step would be to replicate this step which is to stay in the start point of these new nodes to the 112th frame, where Dan Code talks about the next element. And every element is gonna appear on these frames which you will be able to see right now. So move it to these points when you copy paste the node tree. And also don't forget to add these minus 32 degrees to separate our logos from each other. For better understanding, follow these values on screen. And after adding these 10 branches of nodes to our main stream, we will have an animation like this. Now we need to bring all these PNGs back inside the circle one by one. And I tried doing this every other way but as some of our animation is a bit far off from each other, I couldn't find it satisfying enough. So I had to manually bring each of them back to the center. And bear with me guys, it will be over before you know it. On frame number 239, let's select the merge node which is being connected to the very first PNG. Add a keyframe on size, then take the playhead to the 244th frame and bring down the value to 0. Let's repeat the same step on the second merge node where the size will be 1 on the 243rd frame and it will go back to 0 on the 248th frame. Similarly, this process goes on for all these frames respectively. And after adding all these 10 merge nodes, we have done 92% of our Danco animation. Now we just have to add this small hollow circle animation along with these particle effects and after that we are done. So in order to do this let's move to our 280th frame and over here let's go back to our old ellipse node and add a keyframe on its width value. Then on frame number 284 it scales up to 0.17. Then again it scales down to 0.151 on frame number 285. After two frames later on 287 it again goes down to 0.109. Now on frame number 294, it scales up to 0.32 and it maintains its scale till frame number 303. Then on the next frame, it again comes down to 0.105. The final keyframe would be at frame number 312 and over here, the width will have a value of 0.291. And after completing all these values, we will have an animation like this. But there are few opacity changes which are happening while the animation is running. So for that, let's select the merge node and move our playhead to 287th frame. Add a keyframe over here, then on frame number 294, bring the blend all the way down to 0. Add one more keyframe on 303, but don't change the blend value, let it be 0 itself. On 304, increase it back to 1, and finally on frame number 312, let's bring it down to 0. Now select the solar ellipse node, go towards frame number 284, change the width to 0.09, and on frame number 285, it will be 0.113. On the next frame, it will be 0 0.09 and on frame number 287, it will be 0 0.066. And after doing this, let's go to our merge node and increase the blend value over here. So click on the merge node and go towards frame number 284, add a keyframe over here and change the blend value to 0. Then on frame number 286, take the blend value all the way up to 1. 
Now there are three more key frames remaining in our ellipse node, so let's quickly add them. First one would be on frame number 294 with the width value of 0.066. The second will be 0.11 on frame number 298 and the final one would be 0.064 on frame number 302. After that, open the spline and smoothen all these curves. And our shape animations are done. Now as per our reference video, we need to give the solid circle a bit of shake to make it feel like it's moving on space. And for that, let's add a camera shake node over here. Go forward to frame number 314 where the solid circle starts to shake and change the overall strength and speed to 0. Do keyframe on both these values, then on frame number 328, change the strength to 0.283 and speed to 0.11. So we have this movement happening on our screen. That's perfect. The very last thing to do is to add this particle-like effect on our video. There are lots of particle nodes in DaVinci Resolve, but it's a bit too complicated for this video. So in order to make this a little bit more easier, let's add a particle star of it video which I found on YouTube. It's a green screen video, so we can anyway modify it. So we have to add a merge node over here because the particle video is like our background element. So it's better to add it over here. Then import the video file and connect it to our merge node. And after doing that, we will have a preview like this. Now select the media node and change the globe link to 314 because that's where the animation starts. I've also trimmed a couple of frames from our video because this is only the good part. So our animation starts at the 182nd frame on our imported video. And also we can give this loop option. Even after doing all of this, we can't still see anything on our background, right? This is because we added a background node in the beginning of the video. So in order to fix it, just go to the alpha value of this background node and take it all the way down to zero. In order to remove the green screen, let's add a luma key node and place it over here. Then decrease the contrast to minus 0.89 and also the gamma to 0.656. And we are just left with these particles. So in order to flatten it and make it a little bit more appealing, let's add our very final node, which is our color corrector node. Inside of it, let's bring down the saturation to zero. Contrast will be 2.24 and gamma will be 1.73. But right now, our color character settings are getting applied to every other nodes. Let's fix it by going to the options and checking this pre-divide or post-multiply box. I'm also increasing the size of our video to fit in our screen, so the size value in the most settings will be 1.485. And after all of these nodes, we have completed our Danko video. Hope it was helpful. I've also made an Iman Gatsi editing style video which is pretty cool. You can find that video on the left hand side of your screen. Wishing you all the best for your fusion journey. Bye bye and take care.